Hello everyone, welcome back to a lecture series for getting data science and AI. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about admissibility and consistency of A star search algorithm. Okay. So in the previous few videos, we have discussed about A star search algorithm and also we have seen one tutorial based on A star search algorithm in that we have discussed one example. Okay. Now let us discuss what is admissibility and what is consistency in the case of A star search algorithm. Okay. Now let us take one common example. So you must have seen in this uh, everywhere. So from S to A, it will take me around 100 unit. From S to B, it will take me around 100 unit. Okay. For simplicity purpose, we are considering this example. Okay. And now uh, we have this particular goal G, right? And this is my path. Here also, this is my path G, right? Now, in order to go from A to G, I will require, say, suppose 40 cost okay and from b to g i will require say for example 60 cost right and here a to g that is straight line distance is my heuristic function right so this is my actual cost this is my actual path and actual cost and this will be h of n that is my heuristic value okay now there are two things in this case okay so if you observe here there are two things in this case first thing is that let us say h star and indicates my actual cost right so actual cost of path right and h of n is my heuristic value right heuristic value it can be a straight line distance it can be a Manhattan distance it can be anything right it can be a anything so it is heuristic value now there are two cases first thing is that h of n is less than or equal to h star of n and in second cases h of n is greater than or equal to h star of n right now here if you see uh, we are underestimating the value of n we are underestimating the path cost here right suppose from a to c i it required 40 cost right but we are estimating it less than 40 that is only 30 for example right so this will be considered considered as underestimate under estimate and here the path cost is much less than the heuristic value so we are, we are overestimating here so this is overestimate this overestimate okay now let us apply the a star search algorithm on this particular graph and see what we get right say for example uh, h of n value in this case let us consider uh, say for example uh, h of a so for a to g it will be around say 80 and from uh, say suppose b to g it will be say greater than 60 only so suppose for example 70 okay now if you consider now if you see here my h of a is 80 and my h star of a is 40 right my h of b my h of b is 70 and my h star of b that is my actual cost is 60 so here you can clearly say, see that this is the uh, condition for overestimate, right? H of star of G, right? This is the overestimate. So I am overestimating the heuristic value. Now what will happen in this case, right? Now let us try to discuss that. Suppose I want to go uh, to G, right? From uh, starting point. So from S, I will start. From S, I can go to A or B. But which node? It is based on the F of N value. So what is f of n value in the case of uh, a star search that is g of n plus h of n right so g of n is basically a cumulative cost of uh, that particular uh, node from the starting node right right so from s i can go to a and b but from a to g so what will be my f of a here it will be around 100 right from this to this that is 100 g of n value plus h of n will be in this case that is 80 that is 180 and what is f of b here f of b will be 100 and plus 70 that is 170 right now which one is less according to a star search algorithm which one is less this one right f of b then i will go through b this is my s this is my uh, b okay this is my 100 now from b i can go to c uh, from b i can go to g directly right but at what cost at the cost of f of g through b so s b g at what cost it is 100 plus 60 160 plus 0 because the heuristic value of goal state is 0 right so it will be around 
60. So I will reach the goal state at a cost of 160, right? It is 60. But whether this is optimal or not, because another node is another f of a is having f of a is having 180, right? So, which is greater than this particular uh, 160. So, we are not going to explore this particular path because in the last tutorial, we have discussed that if this particular value is, uh, so if, if this particular value is greater than any of the path costs, so then, then A star search will also start uh, searching uh, through that particular path. But in this case, it is, uh, this, it is greater than this 160, right? So, it will not explore this particular path. So, in this case, we get the answer as BG, but at the cost of 160. But is it optimal? Is it optimal value? No, because we have optimal cost this SAG which is having 140. But it took me 160 to reach here. So this is not an optimal case, right? Now this is when we are overestimating the value of heuristic function in the actual cost, right? So but the ideal value will be H of n equals to H star of n, but we cannot uh, estimate that, so it is not applicable. So we cannot estimate that easily, right? So there can be two uh, things only, right? There are two cases only. Okay. Now in the uh, first case, that is underestimation. Suppose h of n value. Okay. Suppose my h of n value. Now it is say for example 30, and here it is say for example 40, right? Uh, h of a and this h of b will be my uh, say 40. Now in this case, uh, which path I will follow? From s. So first uh, from 100 to 30. That will be 130 and for B, it will be around 100 to 40, that is 140, right? So, which one is less? A wala path, right? And from S, I will go to A, that is 100 cost, and from A, I can directly uh, go to G at the cost of 40, right? At a cost of 40, that is this one. So, here I found the 140 as the answer, and this is my optimal value, right? In order to get the optimal answer, the heuristic function should be less than or equal to the actual cost of a path function, right? So that is underestimate. So our heuristic value always must underestimate. It should not never, it should never overestimate the uh, cost, right? So that is the case for an optimal thing, right? So please remember that this particular condition of underestimation, that is h of n should be less than or equal to h star of n. That is the heuristic cost should be less than the actual cost should be there in order uh, to be a star search admissible right so we can say when our a star search is admissible or it will give us the optimal value when h of n is less than or equal to a star of n this underestimate okay it should not it should never overestimate right now you must have seen this uh, example okay in the uh, many references like in the youtube or in any other uh, internet resources right they have taken the similar example must just a value has been changed right but one more thing here, right? Okay. Now I will take same example. S of A. Uh, I am going to A. I am going to B. The cost of 100. The cost of 100. Then I am going to G. I am going to G. Okay. So this is my actual path like this. This is 40. And this was 60, right? And this is my H of N value. This is H of N path, right? So this is my heuristic path, right? This is heuristic path. Straight line distance. Now, what we said in the case of overestimate, we said that h of n is greater than or equal to h star of n, then we can say it is overestimate, right? But the example we took, in that I have considered the h of n value, so h of n value of a, h of a value is 80 and h of b value is 70, right? Now, through this, what we got, that is 100 plus uh, 80, that is 180, 100 plus 70 is 170. And through, if we go by this particular path, we will get this particular path, SBG, we reach the goal state at a cost of 160, but we will never uh, get the, but we will net, but we will never get the optimal path because the cost of this particular uh, A note is 100 plus 70, that is 170, that is 180, right? 100 plus 80. So, that's why we said uh, it should not over, it should uh, never overestimate. But what if I reverse the case? Instead of 80, I am just considering it as, say, for example, uh, 60. Okay. Now, in this case also, see. Now, in this case also, here you can see H of A. H of A is greater than H star of A. And H of B is also greater than H star of B. Now, what will happen? Right. Now, for A, for F of A, my value will be 100 plus 60. That is 160. Right. 
f of b will be same 100 plus 70 that is uh, 170 now in this case this value is less right now i can go by this particular path uh, till a and from a i can reach to g by the cost of 40 so my final path will be in this case s a g okay at the cost of 140 now here uh, i got the optimal answer because f of n value for node b is 170 which is greater than 140 so we are not exploring that part now in the case of overestimate also we are getting the optimal value just i change the value of heuristic function now what we can say about this okay so one thing is that even if our heuristic function is overestimating the cost it may or may not give the optimal value it may or may not give right right so if you have referred to any youtube or any other external resources on internet so they will not tell you this point they will only tell you the previous example that i have taken right but this point is also uh, important we uh, change this particular value to 60 then in that case i will get the optimal cost also because in this case uh, my conditions are getting satisfied and it is overestimate also right but i am getting but i am but still i am getting the optimal uh, path right so it, it depends on the it depends on heuristic value okay it depends on heuristic value even if you are if you, even if you are overestimating the uh, cost the path right it may or may not be optimal value but in the case of underestimate but in the case of underestimate okay underestimate okay that is h of n is less than or equal to s star of n now in this case you will definitely get the optimal path it is definitely we will reach the optimal path but in this case may or may not reach the optimal path so, so that's the difference between overestimating and underestimating right right so that's the thing about overestimating and underestimating and this is what we call admissible if this condition is satisfied then we can say it is admissible okay and it is for each and every node right it is for each and every node okay so this is for uh admissible okay this is for admissible so i hope you understand the concept of admissible that is this condition must satisfy right it should not uh overestimate it should it should not overestimate the heuristic function okay in that case we'll get the optimal value right but even if case in, but even if uh, it is overestimate so it may or may not be the optimal value so may not is there right okay so please keep a uh, note of this particular point okay now let us discuss this particular example so we have seen this example we have solved this example in the previous tutorial so you can go through it now we'll discuss about the consistency right consistent so what is consistent so there is one equation we can say our uh, a star search is consistent when when h of n is equals is less than or equals to h of n plus 1 plus c okay now what is h of n plus 1 plot uh, plus c suppose you are at this particular a right this is h of a right now h of a value should be less than or equal to its uh, immediate successor uh, so which are immediate successor this is b and this is c because there are two successor b c and g also right this is the goal state now let us uh, check for a c so h of c and uh, the c is basically indicates the path cost okay so path cost between n and n plus 1 between a and c between a or b right so here in this case we are considering c so it is 5 right so what is h of a here h of a is 6 right and what is h of c here h of c here is 1 so 1 plus 5 that is 6 so 6 is less than or equal to 6 yeah so in this case we can uh, consider we can say okay our this particular node is consistent now if you consider this b point also so h of a is less than or equal to h of uh, b plus now what is the cost between a and b that is 2 now in this case h of a is 6 and h of b is 2 so now in this case h of b is 2 so 6 is not uh, less than or equal to 4 though in this case if i uh, go through from a to b that is not that will not be uh, consistent right so in order to be a consistent my this condition should be satisfied right it is h of n should be less than or equal to h of n plus 1 plus c where c is the path cost between n and n plus 1 right the yeah, same thing like for h of b also right so h of b h of b equals to uh, next good is my c right so h of uh, c plus the cost of uh, between b to c that is 2 so in this case of uh, h of b will be 2 and my c will be 
uh, what is C1 plus 2, that is 3, right? So it is greater than or equal to C. So this part is particular. Now this path is satisfied, right? Now just uh, that's it in this particular consistency. Plus remember that this particular uh, this particular equation must satisfy for each and every node, right? The H of n should be less than or equals to h of n plus 1. n plus 1 is basically successor node, okay? So, in short, we can say as n dash also, right? It is n dash, it is successor node, okay? So, we, I can uh, rewrite its uh, equation as h of n as h of n dash plus uh, c. So, c is the distance between n and n dash, okay? It's a, a path crossed between n and n dash, okay? So, this will be your uh, consistency, uh, equation for a consistency, okay? Now that's it from this particular, uh, okay. So I hope you understand the concept of consistent and admissible. Okay, now here you can see uh, for A star search to be optimal, the heuristic function H of N should be first, it is admissible or never overestimating the true cost, right? It should not overestimate the true cost, right? Then only we will get the optimal value. If it overestimating the cost, then it may or may not get the optimal value, right? So that's the case. Now second should now second thing is that it should be consistent. Second thing is consistent. Consistent means uh, that the essential the, that the estimate path cost of a goal of a new node in addition to a cost of a transi transition to it from the previous node is greater than or equal to estimate path uh, cost of the goal node of the previous node. Right. So that's what we have discussed to put in the equation form. So this will be much clear. H of n is consistent if for every node of n and successor node n dash with the state cost of c. So, this condition is satisfied that is h of n less than or equal to h n dash plus c, right? So, where the c is the uh, step cost between n and n dash, okay? So, if this condition is satisfied, then it is consistent and if uh, h of n is less than or equal to h star of n, if this condition is satisfied, then we can say it is admissible, okay? Now, conditions for optimality and admissibility and consistency. So, you can just uh, go through the points that is this these are the same point that i have explained admissible heuristic in a star search is one that never overestimate the cost to reach the goal this means that estimate cost to reach the goal from any node h of n is always less than or equal to a true cost right so admissible heuristic guide the a star, a star algorithm to explore node efficiently ensuring it searches for the most cost effective solution consistently also known as monotonicity of okay, this important point the slightly stricter condition applicable to a star uh, in graph search, a heuristic H of n is consistent if any node and if any node n and its successor n dash generated by an action A, the estimate cost of reaching the goal from n is less than or equal to true cost of reaching n dash plus estimate cost of reaching the goal from n dash. So, like same thing, like H of n should be less than or equal to the cost of getting uh, n to uh, n from n dash to n, like n dash from n. So that is basically a C plus H of uh, N dash, right? So that's what we have discussed. The triangle inequality conceptually resemble this particular property. Yes, a direct path from N to the goal is no longer uh, than the sum of the two shorts path from N to N dash and from N dash to goal, right? So that's the thing. These properties are essential for A star search to provide both complete completeness and optimality while evaluating nodes based on the function right so if these two conditions are satisfied then we can say okay our solutions are uh, complete and we get the optimal solution okay so that's uh, so that's it from this particular uh, topic i hope you got the concept okay so i will come up uh, with a few questions based on this so on the on the portal you can just go to this particular uh, website usevara.com you can see a test series so i will come up with a few questions based on uh, informed search strategies okay thank you